Okay, so after all the hype, I've finally played it. Pokemon Infinite Fusion. So for those of you who have been living under a rock, this game has you playing through a similar adventure to Fire Red and Leaf Green, but with a few more Pokemon. How much more? Well, you can do over 175,000 Pokemon Fusion combinations in this game. Now, to be clear, not all fusions are created equal. Some look like this, while others um look like this. And because I wanted to make my run a little more interesting, I'll be randomizing the game and I'll only be using fire type fused Pokemon. Plus I'll add a ton of extra rules that are on the screen now just to turn up the heat in this run. Now in true Pokemon fashion, we get a choice of three potential starter Pokemon. But because we have randomized the game, we're not guaranteed a fire type. First up we get Cordal, which looks to be a Corsola fused with a Weedle. Next we have a Chunky Boy Manduck, which is clearly a Mankey and a Psyduck. This thing looks like it's about to take my lunch money. And finally, we have the best of the bunch by a mile, a Ferrothorn fused with a Bishop, Ferrosharp. Because I didn't want my rival to end up with a Pokemon that's four times weak to fire, I grabbed the Ferrosharp, but obviously I can't use it as it's not a fire type. The first thing we need to do is get our hands on a fire type, and after some searching, we come across a Solotress. Yep, that's right. Our starter is a legendary fusion of Solosis and a Moltres. Then on Route 22, we run into our next Pokemon, which is a fusion of Cyndaquil and Ferret, Cinderette. Finally, we reach Viridian Forest and we get another banger, this time Combuskin fused with a Ponita Comta. With a team of three, we go and take on our first real rival fight against Blue. He starts things off with this monstrosity, Cordrio, which I later learnt was a Corsola fused with a Dodrio. Regardless, a few sideways from Solotris takes it out. Then it's his ace, Cordal, so we go for some wing attacks, finishing it off and beating our rival. We arrive at Pewter City, where we can find the first gym in the game, and normally this would be a rock type gym leader, but to make the run even more chaotic, I actually randomized the gym leader typings also. By speaking to this old man in the gym, we can confirm the typing, which ironically ends up being a fire type gym. So, Brock thinks he's the best fire type user in the game. Well, he's about to get a reality check. Another cool thing about this game is you can only register the same amount of Pokemon to fight as the gym leader. So for this fight, I bring Solotress and Comta. Brock leads with the Chim2, and this thing is kind of adorable. Makes me kind of feel bad that I'm killing it with Psywave. Next he brings in Chargon too, but all it takes is a few tackles from Comta to take out his ace and get our first gym badge of the run. We arrive to a new route, so I start looking in the grass for our next encounter. Oh god, that Raichu needs some help. What the hell is that muck even doing to it? I spent some more time searching, but it looks like our luck has run out as I didn't find a fire type fusion. The plan is to continue to Mount Moon, but on the way there, a train has a very interesting Pokemon. Yep, there it is, the strongest Pokemon in all of existence, Ardoof. Thankfully, it was feeling merciful and it allowed us to live with our lives. Our next destination is Mount Moon and it doesn't take long to find our next Pokemon, Milava. It's caught fairly easily and that's another powerhouse added to the team. Right before we can leave Mount Moon, Giovanni and Team Rocket seem to be experimenting triple fusions. They force this scientist to take me out, so we start the battle at- wait. This guy's just a super nerd called Miguel. Okay. He has a Luca Lee, which thankfully can be taken care of with a couple of side waves from Solotris. While we were battling, it turns out that the machine didn't work, so Team Rocket flees the scene without completing the triple fusion. We also have no further business here, so we leave heading to Cerulean City. Normally we can head straight to Misty, but we're still below the level cap. So instead, I decided to take on our rival at Nugget Bridge first. And boy, I was not ready for this. Blue leads with a Sylveon, fused with a Fracture, and this thing is a monster. Malava goes for a stomp doing some damage before we get hit even harder with a jewel chop. Hoping for a flinch, we go for another stomp. We don't get the flinch, but somehow we survive on one HP from a second jewel chop. Although it doesn't matter as a quick attack comes our way, taking out Malava. So Lultras comes in and is brought down to full HP before being able to finish off this monster with a side wave. Gasless is next and it straight outspeeds and kills the Lultras with a nightshade. I bring in Quirit to 1v1 the gasless, but we can't quite get the job done, falling after a few hits. Now it's Comta, and the first thing we do is take out this thing with a flame wheel. 
Blue brings in Latang, which thankfully is weak to Rock Smashes, allowing Comta to get the kill. Last is his Karuna, and well, this thing has Bubble Beam, fainting Comta, and giving us our first wipe of the run. We waste no time going straight back to Blue for a rematch, although this time I was a little more prepared. Solotris takes a lead, only to do pathetic damage with a side wave, while a dual chop not only gets us below half, but this time he's holding a shell bell, recovering some HP. By some pure dumb luck, this thing shows us some mercy, going for a scary face, then a swift, and then a quick attack, allowing Solotris to actually take it down. Now it's gasless, and once again the AI is having a stinker, going for a curse, taking out half its HP, meaning a side wave is now enough to get the kill. The tank finally does attack us, ending Solotris with an electro ball, but I'm not complaining. Comka tags in, and with some rock smashes, the Latank falls to us, bringing blue to his last Pokemon, Karuna. Unfortunately, a couple of ancient powers is enough to end Comta. Malava is next, going for a stomp, doing respectable damage, but of course, we get hit with a super effective ancient power, and this stupid thing gets an omni boost, making him even more scary. Another stomp brings him right down to the red, but that's all we can do before a bubble beam ends our life. Quirit has seen enough, coming in and going for a quick attack, which is enough to eliminate Karuna, beating Blue. With our revenge secured, Bill's on the agenda, but before we pay him a visit, we do have access to a new area, giving us a new encounter. Lampjul actually looks amazing, but there's one problem. Like no, God! So I have to reverse the fusion, which gives it a bug fire typing, but unfortunately makes it look much worse. Now it's time to grab those SSN tickets from Bill as we need them to get on the boat later on. We enter his house only to see him cosplaying a real life Spider-Man villain, Rhino. He asks for our help, turning them back into a human. And once that's done, he gives us those sweet SSN tickets that we were looking for. Misty is next up and she's ditched her water Pokemon and instead will be using normal types in this battle. First up is Gracias and all attacks takes his back-to-back -back flame wheels from Comta to eliminate her first Pokemon. Next is Chadoof, which looks cool, but it's light work from Comta, who can take it out with some rock smashes. With that, Misty has been beaten, and we now have two badges. With our boat ticket secured, we head towards Vermilion City, but before we board the boat, we do find a new encounter. Yeah, a Slugma fused with a Jinx should never be a thing, ever. Also, we get access to an old rod from this guy here, meaning there's a fishing encounter possibility. Okay, Larvivi is technically not a fire type, I can still evolve this thing with a fire stone, which would then make it a fire type. So because of that, I do end up catching it. Finally, we have done everything we need to, and we can board the SSN cruise ship. Once in, we do have another rival fight with Blue, but this time it was pretty easy, as Solotris can pretty much solo his whole team. We then head to the captain's quarters and, um, rub his back. Huh, not quite sure that's appropriate to be honest, but he does thank us by giving us the HM for cut. Now that we have cut, we can head to Lieutenant Surge and his gym, and according to the guy at the front, we have a psychic gym here. Also, side note, whoever created this stupid gym puzzle, I hope you step on some Lego without shoes. Finally, we make it to Lieutenant Surge, and we can start the fight. He leads with a, oh god, this guy literally has a Mewtwo on steroids. Mewchoke starts a fight by going for a future site, where Beant goes for a quick a dance, raising my stats. We can land two flame bursts, almost taking it out, before falling to the future side attack that he used at the start. We bring in our own legendary fusion, Solotress, and Lieutenant Surge uses a super potion, healing his Mucho back up, but we do bring it right down with a side shock. He uses another potion, but it's futile as Solotress brings him right back down with a side shock before delivering one last one to take it out. The rest of his team is dealt with pretty easily by Solotress, beating our third gym leader of the run. Rock Tunnel needs to be explored, but expecting it to be dark, we need the HM for Flash, which can be found on the other side of Diglett Cave. Well, that's what I thought anyway. I visited each of the buildings, and none of them mentioned anything about HM Flash. I decided to head to Rock Tunnel, and on the way there, we get a new encounter, Blast Lava. And although this is starting to look like a Typhlosion fusion run, I don't care, as I want this Pokemon. Plus, the water typing is super useful. Not long after, we arrive towards Rock Tunnel, and once inside, it is still pitch black. I go to the Pokemon Center nearby and speak to this young lady. I tried going through Rock Tunnel, but it was much too dark. I couldn't see a thing. Turns out that I need to complete some hotel quests to be able to get myself HM Flash. From here, I backtrack all the way to Cerulean City and head inside the hotel. We run into this nerd, and apparently I've already completed a quest without knowing. Because of this, he can give me HM08, which is Flash. Inside Rock Tunnel, we run into an absolute powerhouse Pokemon, Volcatress. Yep, a Volcatress 
Corona fused with a Moltres. Best part was that it only took a single quick ball to catch this thing. As we explore the cave, we find an exit that leads to another cave, which is a cool Easter egg to the original Legend of Zelda game on the NES. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Then he gives us a Dunloon. Right, I really feel safe now knowing that this thing is by my side. Apparently in the unrandomized version, you get a Honage, which is pretty cool as it's a sword Pokemon, which complements a Zelda reference very well. Not long after, we do finally exit the cave and arrive at Lavender Town. The first thing I do is leave the town and make my way to Celadon City. Then I can go into the shopping center, going up the floors until I can finally find the one that sells evolution stones. We buy a fire stone and waste no time using it on La Vivi, evolving it into a fire type, Lavirion, which looks okay, I guess. Nothing special. Back to Lavender Town we go, and now it's time for another rival fight inside the Pokemon Tower. Blue leads with a Clef Kid, and now I feel bad that I have to kill something so cute. Volcatress can easily set up with some Quiver Dancers, as the magical leaves coming away do pathetic damage. Once set up, we have no issues taking out each and every one of Blue's Pokemon with ease and embarrassing him once again. Again. Before we head back to Celadon City to deal with Team Rocket, we do get another encounter. This time it's a, a Volcagon? Volcagon. Okay. Unfortunately, once caught, it turns out to be a water bug type, meaning we'll need to reverse fuse this thing into a Drurona. Why does this look so derpy for? Anyway, you can go in the box. We arrive back at Celadon City and we go straight to the game corner to find the secret hideout. We go to search the poster, but find nothing there. From here, I decide to go to the gym and see if there was any clues, only to run into the gym leader, Erica, who tells me that Team Rocket are in the sewers. So we team up with her and we head to the sewers to investigate. And let's just say there's something wrong with her Blaziken. This thing is just bones and gas. We keep exploring the sewers, taking out Team Rocket grunts along the way before we can finally reach their boss, Giovanni. Now, normally Erica heals you between every battle, but the battle right before Giovanni, she's not there to do that. So I went into this fight with Volcatress almost dead. Normally this would be a problem, but his Veloom only has one attacking move, Mega Drain, which we quad resist and barely damages us. Meaning we can actually set up on this thing with some Quiver Dancers before using Gust to take it out. Next is Juizard, but because I know it's either part flying or part fire type thanks to the Charizard, an ancient power takes it out. Last is his Blastery, so I start going for Absorbs, dealing decent damage while healing some health. Water Pulses bring us back down low, but we can survive them and defeat Giovanni's last Pokemon. He gives us a self scope, which means we once again need to head back to Lavender Town. We go to save Mr. Fuji from Team Rocket, but it turns out that they already took what they needed and left. He does hand over the Pokey Flute, and now we can wake up Pokemon blocking any path. Erica is our next target, so we head to the gym, although there does not seem to be any man at the front confirming the gym typing. After some battles with the trainers, we can see that all the Pokemon are part flying type, so it's safe to assume that Erica will be a flying type gym leader. We get to Erica in the center of the maze, and now we can start the battle. Puperion knows rock slide and with that move it can take out both the flat shoot and the knock track with a single hit her ace turgia which is a turtwig fused with a lugia actually puts up more of a fight thanks to it being pretty bulky eventually we do take it out with some rock slides giving us the win and half the gym badges in the game now that we do have a new level cap we did get some new evolutions so here's a quick update with the team that i'm working with for now we have milosian dutress puperion blastosian volcatress and finally, Bloodstar. Using the bike path, we travel to Fuchsia City and we can check out the gym. The old man confirms that Koga is a ground type master, which is actually super effective against almost my entire team. So I decided to skip the Koga fight for now and head to the Safari Zone, as there should be a useful HM there that I can use for the Koga fight. After some time exploring, we finally arrive at the house where we can talk to this guy who gives us HMO3, Sir. We keep exploring the Safari Zone and we find a strange temple deep within. So we go inside the chest check it out to see if we can get any encounters. And let's just say we did. It doesn't take long before we get an amazing encounter, Shelter. This thing has the potential to become a Salamence and a Rapidash Fusion when evolved, which would be amazing. There's nothing else we need to do in the Safari Zone, so now we can leave and prepare for Koga. We enter the gym and make our way to Koga, beginning the battle. He leads with Heraterra, and one serve from Blastosian is almost enough to take it out. Unfortunately, it does not, meaning we get Leech Seeded. I do finish off the Heraterra with a second serve, 
left, but I don't want to stay in while Leech seeded. Next, he brings in Land Tom, so I hard switch in Melosion into a super effective Rock Slide. Melosion gets it down low thanks to a Body Slam, but ultimately, it falls to a Rock Slide, but it's done its job. Blastosian comes back in and can finish off the Land Tom with a big Surf. Talonterra is his next Pokemon, and this thing was super weak to my Surf, dying instantly. Last is his Ace Fenrua, which also stands no chance surviving a Stab Surf. That's another Gym Leader down, and we're starting to make some serious progress. We come across a Snorlax that we need to wake up. Well, actually, it's a, a Heralade. Regardless, once we beat it, Koga's daughter thanks us and asks us to head to Fuchsia City to meet her dad, which is kind of awkward as we've already beaten him and she has no idea. I do head back to find her in her house and she ends up thanking me again, giving me HM04, which is strength. Saffron City is our next destination, but before we can get through, we have to defeat a Team Rocket member. And I tell you what, Giovanni really didn't want anyone making it through here. This guy's team is stacked. We do eventually take out both the Digrom and the Hip Champ, but this was a step above the standard grunt fights. With him defeated, we continue through and make it safely to Saffron City. Team Rocket is up to some more trouble, so we infiltrate the Silphco building and start taking out the grunts within. Now that all the grunts are taken care of, I can go straight to the boss, Giovanni. But of course, before I can, my rival Blue comes at the worst time wanting to battle. Once again, this is a fairly stress-free battle as we can deal with all his Pokemon one at a time, although I did notice that I was a little underleveled for this fight. We beat Blue and now he wants to join us to take on Giovanni and my god, he, he must have been holding back on me as he leads with a Zekamori, which is a Zekrom used with a Skarmory. Giovanni also ain't playing around as he leads with two Celebi Fusions in this fight. The fight goes back and forward, but eventually we can take out all of Giovanni's Pokemon defeating him and saving the day once again. Before we take on Sabrina, we do get a couple of evolutions, starting with a Ryu Tress, and then followed up with a Shell Dash, both who are looking good. Traditionally, Sabrina is one of, if not the hardest trainers in the games, so there's a chance that this could be a tough fight. We speak to the old man in the gym, and oh, she's using grass types. Well, this is going to be fun. Volcatress is the perfect Pokemon for this gym, as it quad resists grass type moves. Add the fact that it knows Flamethrower and Fly, and well, yeah, this was a bloodbath for Sabrina and a poor Pokemon. Badge number six is in the bag, and we can now finally leave this city. Cinnabar Island is our next stop, and by beating Sabrina, we can now use Surf outside of battle, allowing us to make it across. On the island, there's an abandoned mansion that we need to search through and find a key. But while looking, we come across a new encounter, Charcian. And you better believe that I want to add this thing. It's caught without too much trouble and we add it straight to the team. We continue to explore the mansion while taking out some Pokemon trainers along the way until we finally reach the end where we can find the gym leader Blaine. After a short chat, he agrees to head back to the gym so we can challenge him. The gym is unlocked so we go inside. The old man confirms that Blaine will be using ghost types which is not too big of a deal for us. I start clearing through all of his trainers trying to level up, but even after beating them all, we are still well below the level cap, so I decided to leave the gym and find a place to grind. Shortly after we start grinding levels, Shell Dash evolves into this beauty, Saladash. This is one of my favorite fused Pokemon so far. Okay, while I was grinding my Pokemon, I ran into a Moltres fused with a Mewtwo. Yes! a double legendary fusion, which we will be catching. Moltu is a legendary bird that can control fire. However, even though the scientific power of humans made its body, they failed to give it a warm heart. Interesting Pokedex entry. With the level cap up to 51, it's time to take on Blaine and his ghost type Pokemon. Blaine starts off with a Digplet, while we have Charcian to take the lead. We go for a nasty plot, doubling our special attack, before Digplet lands a huge earthquake, almost taking us out in a single hit. But we do survive the hit, and respond with a big Shadow Ball, taking it out. And well, from here, it's all downhill for Blaine and his ghost Pokemon, as they're all Shadow Ball to death from Charcian. Blaine is defeated, and we have just one more badge to collect. I head back to Viridian City, as that's where the last gym is located. But upon arrival, this guy's at the front, telling us that the gym leader is still not back. So I fly back to Cinnabar Island to see if I miss anything important there. Turns out, just below the Pokemon Center, I can find Team Rocket once again causing problems. The captain won't let them on without a pass, so they just go and steal the boat themselves and head to Mount Ember. Unfortunately, without a boat, we need to go the old-fashioned way, surfing on a Pokemon. 
Pokemon, which isn't too difficult to do. We find the boat docked on the beach, so we jump off our Pokemon and start walking. Mount Ember is full of Team Rocket grunts, and as we continue to make our way to the top, we just beat up whoever's in our way. Eventually, we do reach the peak where we can find Giovanni, who has just completed a triple fusion with all three legendary bird Pokemon. Not happy to see me, he starts a battle against us, and this time using a triple fused Pokemon, Zap Mokuno. Moltu starts to fight for us, and this is a three on one battle. We land a Psychic on the middle one, doing okay damage before an ancient power, followed up by an air slash, takes out my strongest Pokemon. I switch in Blastosian, going for a Surf so it can hit all three Pokemon at once, doing big damage to the middle one, and okay damage to the other two. Zap Molkuno goes for a charge, raising its stats, while also hitting me with an ancient power and an air slash. But thankfully, we survived the hits, allowing one more Surf to take out the middle one and do some more chip damage to the other two. Another ancient power comes our way, and now Blastosian has also fallen. Next, I bring in Blaze Dash, hoping that because they're fused, they're no longer flying type Pokemon and an earthquake would hit them. But it doesn't, and I get hit with a discharge and a freeze dry, bringing me into the red. I then go for a blaze kick and continuing my horrible luck, we miss the attack and they get taken out with an ancient power. Saladash now takes over and can do good damage with a dragon claw, but we get hit hard with another ancient power while they get an omni boost, raising all their stats. To top it off, a discharge brings us into the red and then paralyzes Saladash, meaning we get outsped and die before we can do anything. Charcian is my fastest Pokemon, so he comes in and he can outspeed and land a super effective power gem, but even that's not enough to take one out. This means a freeze dry, which freezes me by the way, followed up by a discharge, gets the kill, bringing me to my last Pokemon, Volcatress. Volcatress goes for an ancient power, hoping to get an Omni Boost, which doesn't happen, but we do take out the second one. The last one goes for an agility, raising its speed, but sparing us in the process. It looks like it's run out of PP for ancient power, which would have destroyed us, meaning it can only now land not very effective freeze dries, while we can respond with super effective ancient powers and slay this triple fused monster of a Pokemon. We've defeated Giovanni and stop Team Rocket yet again. Back to Viridian City we go, and this time we can actually enter the gym. We speak to the old man, who tells us Giovanni uses poison type Pokemon, which works very well for Moltu. We make our way through the gym, and we start our final fight with Giovanni. His first Pokemon is an Espeon fused with an Oddish, so for this little guy, I go for a couple of Shadow Balls, which take it out. The rest of Giovanni's team then gets completely destroyed with Psyshocks from Moltu with everyone getting one-shotted from the attack, except for Crowsbars, which is surprisingly bulky enough that it needs two hits to kill. In the end, we get the job done and have successfully collected all the gym badges in the game. With all the gym badges in our possession, we can make our way to the Pokemon League and take on the Elite Four. On the way there, Lou once again stops us wanting to battle, so we take him on. This is a fairly straightforward battle for us to deal with, and with some clever switches, all of Lou's Pokemon can be taken out with not too much trouble, giving us another win over our rival right before Victory Road. Eventually, we do make it to the cave in Victory Road, and if you've ever played Fire Red or Leaf Green, you'll notice that it's a very similar path to those games. I do make the effort to battle every trainer here as we are below the level cap and need the experience. After some time, we eventually make it to the end of the cave and once outside, it's just a short walk that will take us into the room right before the Elite Four battle. We heal our Pokemon at the Pokemon Center and then enter the first room where Lorelei is waiting. Lorelei is using bug types. Yes, you heard me right, bug type Pokemon going against my team of fire types. I lead with Charcian who goes for a nasty plot raising my special attack, but out of nowhere, her Heracue lends a huge close combat, absolutely destroying us in a single hit. After that embarrassing start, Volcatress tags in and sets things straight by flamethrowing everything in sight. This actually gets pretty ugly, and we basically burn Lorelei's entire Pokemon team into ashes, getting our first win in the Elite Four. Bruno is next, and he clearly took things up a notch as he's using Dragon-type Pokemon. Charcian once again takes the lead against his Voltgon, and we set up with a nasty plot while getting hit hard with a dragon rush. Back to back power gems does take out the vault gone, beating Bruno's first Pokemon. Next is Garadactyl, and this thing looks mean. We go for a power gem, which is super effective, but not quite enough to get the kill. It responds with a Dragon Claw, taking us out. Saladash is the perfect Pokemon for this battle, so I bring him in while Bruno uses a full restore. 
but because we land a critical hit Dragon Claw, it's strong enough to one-shot this monster. From here, it's a clean sweep against Bruno, as Saladash can just outspeed and Dragon Claw everything, one-shotting them all, giving us a very clean win for our second fight. Now it's Agatha, and she'll be using Dark-type Pokemon for this fight. I change it up, and I leave with Blastosian, who can Flamethrower and surf his way to victory over her first Pokemon. Now it's Diat Wig, and for some reason I went for a not very effective Earthquakes on this thing before I'd realized that a Flamethrower would have absolutely destroyed it. Agatha brings in Honchu, who can outspeed and take out Blastosian with a Foul Play. Honchu then goes for an Iron Deluge, which I have no idea what it does, while Blaze Dash goes for an Earthquake, which somehow misses. We don't miss the second Earthquake, however, and we can outspeed and take it out. Galrock looks amazing, but even so, it's in my way. A Blaze Kick followed by an Earthquake is enough to get the kill on this Pokemon. Finally, it's Zorora left, and two Blaze Kicks later, we can put an end to Agatha and her Pokemon. Last but not least, we have Lance, who is using Ice Pokemon. Moltu comes in and shows no mercy to any of his Pokemon. Flamethrower after Flamethrower, they all melt into puddles, with none of them having any chance against us. It was a pretty pathetic attempt from Lance, if I'm being honest. We have now beaten the Elite Four, meaning we only have the champion left to defeat. We enter the room, and surprise, surprise, it's blue. That means to truly become champion, we need to beat him one last time. I lead with Volcatress, but his Galvan Mega is too quick, outspeeding and landing a super effective Air Slash, which also makes us flinch. This means on the next turn, we'll be outsped and taken out with a second Air Slash. I switch in Charcian, and we are able to set up a nasty plot while Galvan Mega uses a U-turn, doing some damage, but switch switching out, bringing in Chan to Solar. We go for a super effective Shadow Ball, but even with a nasty plot, it's not enough to get the kill. We then get hit with a super effective Earth Power, killing our second Pokemon. Saladash is next to come in and try his luck, as Blue uses a full restore, healing his Pokemon back up. But a Crunch is super effective, and it brings it back down below half health. Blue then continues to waste his full restores on Chan to Solar, as Saladash can keep crunching it back down, before eventually he switches Galvamega back in. It then goes for a U-turn, doing minimal damage, but brings Bringing back Chandelosa, who will then fall to a Dragon Claw on the switch. His ace, Cordial, comes in, but a couple of Dragon Claws is too much for it, and it goes down. Now it's Milstar, who does survive a super effective Earthquake, and then responds with a Rock Blast that almost took us out. We go for another Earthquake, but Blue reads the play, switching in Galva Mega, who is immune to ground moves. It then finishes off Salad Dash with a Bug Buzz, and Blue is in complete control of this fight so far. Blaze Dash comes in, only to get flinched from an Air Slash, and then killed by a Discharge that follows. Moltu has seen enough and comes in to clean up the mess. He starts off by outspeeding and flamethrowing this Galva Mega to its death. Then he uses Psychic on the Millstar that comes in, also taking it out. Blue then brings in Krakut, so we go for a flamethrower, hoping it's part grass type, but unfortunately, it's not very effective. We easily eat the incoming Moonblast from the Krakut, but I decided to switch in Blastosian, who can come in and finish it off with a couple of surfs. Blue's last line of defense is Riolum, but this thing is nothing Blastosian can't handle, and after a few more flamethrowers, we can get the kill on his final Pokemon. We have finally beaten Blue for the last time, and now we are champions of the region. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.